In this video, we're going to take a look at how accurate the polling was back in 2020. So we're going to go through all the states and shade them accordingly. Now, there's a lot of different ways you could get polling data for 2020. There's plenty of sources out there. I mainly took the aggregates that were from Wikipedia, which uses Real Clear Politics 270 to win and 538. I then compared that to the actual margin. Then I rounded the difference and put that number in for each state. So those are not the electoral votes. Those are the polling biases, either in favor of Biden or Trump. A few states were spot on and had no bias whatsoever. So one other thing to keep in mind is some of these states just did not have a ton of polls. Those are going to be the states that were not at all considered battlegrounds. So some of those numbers are going to be a little bit skewed. It's not that important, but I put them in anyway. Now this time, the shading is going to be a little bit different. Normally my darkest colors are for over 10 point margins, but a 10 point polling miss is just going to be way too far off. So I lowered the threshold a little bit. This time, six points is going to be the darkest color. It's not really a safe margin this time because we're not doing a prediction but you could call it safe if you'd like then the next color down are going to be four to five point margins then two to three points are going to be the lighter colors and the very lightest colors which are normally the tilt margins they're going to be one point errors and the ones that are zero we're going to leave those purple so if the polls underestimated biden we're going to color those red for having a trump bias and if the polling underestimated trump we're going to color those blue because they had a bias in favor of biden all the numbers are already there let's first knock off the states that had the least bias. We've got California. Not competitive, but it was right on the money. Then we've got Illinois, another blue state, spot on. Mississippi, that's a red state that also had no bias. And the last state is going to be Georgia. That actually was a very crucial battleground and ended up being the narrowest margin out of all the states. So Georgia came through with all that pressure with the narrow margin. The pollsters in the aggregate got it right here. Now, one other place to mention is actually Nebraska's third congressional district. It's extremely red. I couldn't find any polling. So because of that, we're going to color it purple and say that it had no bias. Now let's go one up from that and look at the states that had a one point bias. There's one for each side. We've got Minnesota, which was biased in favor of Biden. Then we've got Maine's first congressional district. It's very blue, but it did slightly overestimate Trump. Now we can go up to the states that had a two or a three point miss. First, let's start with the Trump bias. We've got one state and that's Colorado. Biden was mildly underestimated here. And then we've also got Washington, D.C. It's extremely blue and it's impressive that with a more than 80 point margin for Biden. They were able to get it within two points and just slightly overestimate Trump. And there is one more spot that's biased for Trump. That's Nebraska's second congressional district. That's the Omaha district that swung toward the left. It did underestimate Biden there by a few points. Now the rest of these states that all had a two or a three point bias were all in favor of Biden. First, we've got Alaska. Then we can go to the West Coast and we've got Washington. Then we've got a couple of key swing states here. We've got Nevada and Arizona. Next door, there's also New Mexico. Down at the Gulf, we've got Louisiana. Then we've got two states into the Rust Belt. We've got Michigan and Pennsylvania. In the Northeast, we've also got Vermont, Massachusetts, and Maine at large. Then we can go back down the East Coast. We've got the Garden State of New Jersey, Maryland, Virginia, and North Carolina. All those states had a mild bias in favor of Biden and underestimation of Trump. Now we can go up to the states that had an even bigger miss of four to five points. And there's actually none here that were biased in favor of Trump. All these are going to be in Biden's direction. This time, we've got Hawaii, then back up to the West Coast, we've got Oregon, then we can head east toward Kansas, then south in Texas and Arkansas, back up into the Midwest, we've got Indiana, then north and toward the East Coast, we've got New Hampshire, Delaware, South Carolina, and Florida. All those states underestimating Trump's support by a medium amount. Now, all the remaining states had a polling bias of six points or more. And again, every one of these is actually in favor of Joe Biden and underestimated Donald Trump. And again, some of these are really safe states that did not not get a ton of polling, but let's go through them. We've got Idaho with 13, Utah with 12, Montana 11, Wyoming another 12, North Dakota 15, South Dakota 13, and then we also can't forget about Nebraska at large. That was off by nine points, and Nebraska's first congressional district had a 13 point miss. Oklahoma had a 12 point miss. Then the former purple state of Iowa had a six point miss. Missouri had a seven. Then another very significant state that's going to be Wisconsin that had a seven point underestimation of Trump's support. That's significant. It was the exact same in Ohio. Kentucky and Tennessee were both off by 10 points. Alabama had another six point miss while West Virginia was at 16. New York and Connecticut again both had six point biases and the last state of Rhode Island that had a double digit 10 point bias. Finally in Maine's second congressional district that's the much redder district that underestimated Trump's support there by nine points. So that's it. That's the entire map. If you add up all those points 
points, that does come out to 291 in favor of Biden and only eight in favor of Trump. I don't think it's really that much of a secret that the polling did underestimate Trump across the board, but this has the exact number along with the shading so you can visually soak it in all at once. The safe states that did not have a lot of polling are not really a factor in this. It's the battlegrounds and anything close to that that we're taking a look at. And this time the Rust Belt was a little bit better than it was in 2016, but there was still enough of a miss there, especially in Wisconsin in favor of Biden. And normally a one or two point miss in the aggregate is not too terrible. But once you start to get to three or four points, that does raise some questions. And then obviously if you hit five, six or seven points, that means the pollsters were missing something entirely. Maybe they weighted the sample wrong. They misunderstood the electorate. Maybe respondents were not being truthful. And maybe there just was more of a hidden Trump vote out there. It's probably not going to be exactly one thing. But when Trump has been on the ballot, that has thrown the polling industry for a loop. It doesn't mean it's going to happen again next time. It could, but it could also be by a smaller margin. And it's also possible that maybe some of these states underestimate Biden next time. It's very easy to do in hindsight, but it's undeniable that the polling was kind of pathetic back in 2020. It's just pretty much all in one direction, and most of it is by more than one or two points. Sometimes that's enough to flip a state, sometimes it's not, but a lot of people have lost faith in polling. You could also go back to the midterms, where support for Democrats was underestimated. So there's kind of something for each side to hold on to if they want to say the polling is right or wrong. There's no way to predict what it's going to be in six months from now, so hopefully all the data is correct or very close. One other thing to keep in mind is there was not a lot of third-party presence in the last election. and the current election, there could be four, five, or six candidates. That's going to make polling that much more difficult. But that's it. This is what it looked like after the last election. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about this map and what do you think about the polling? Which states do you think are the hardest to poll and which do you think have the best accuracy? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.